Hello, this is Alan Urban here, or known as Mr. Cars Dude on um, YouTube, and I had just recently read uh, John Max Tone Graham's new book, the uh, SS United States, Red, White, and Blue, Ribbon Forever, and I would like to share with you the, um, some of the book and also give kind of a critique on it. Now, the book, as it is here, is basically a complete history of the SS uh, United States as you can see it's a really fantastic book a lot of pretty pictures there's a lot of beautiful pictures in this book like right here if you see here some pictures of the ship's construction these are very wonderful photographs and uh, I mean this book is just filled with just pictures and pictures but this is a really unique picture right here. It shows the inside of the um, second smokestack being erected. But anyway, but basically the, the, the story of the book is the history of this ship. And it is chronicled and it's written by the legendary maritime historian John Max Tone Graham. The man that brought us the legendary book, The Only Way to Cross which is a great book, but I'm going to put this down here for a moment. And um, now for my critique on the book, I I, base, I would give it you know, two thumbs up for me because I am a big SS United States fan, but um, for some other people I know, they kind of uh, thought it was iffy, iffy, and they kind of <clears throat> thought it kind of tanked, like my friend, maritime historian and author Russ Willoughby. And he said that from his experience with his um, John Max Tone Graham's two other books that were printed by the W.W. W. Norton, the, um, the Normandy and the France book, he says that um, Mr. Max Tone Graham tends to use um, very fancy words that people don't really have a, an understanding for what they mean. And... Uh, tends to like to get off subject when he should stay on subject for what he is writing about. And I have read, um, move out of the way, Izzy. Sorry, that was my dog. But anyway, like I was saying earlier, I've read his book on the, um, the Normandy. And, uh, excuse me here. I've read his book on uh, the Normandy. And, um, there's been a few parts where it, it tended to get off of, off track. But either than that, it was a pretty decent book. And then in John Max Tone Grant's book, Here in the United States, uh, there was very, there's been several words that really got me confused to the point where I had to look up in a dictionary and a few of the words that he used in the book wasn't even in the, the fucking dictionary to begin with. And I had to look them up on freaking Webster's.com. And still, it still confused me. Like one of them was like autodidact or something. And. I mean, it was explained about William Francis Gibbs, and from what autodidact is, it means self-taught. I mean, instead of using the word autodidact, you should use self-taught. It would, it's more, it's easier to understand. And uh, another one was like muscular tone or something like that, which, uh, if I could look it up here in the, the book, give me a second here. Let me see here if I can find it. I'll just read it to you if I can find it here. Hmm. Talking about uh, the ship. I think it's right here. Hmm. I don't know if I was here or not. Right here. Like a successful runner or hurdler, the United States boasted extraordinary musculature within a lightweight, well-toned body. Now, musk, that word I had to look up in the dictionary as well. And it wasn't in the, like I said, it wasn't in the fucking dictionary either. But I did like the fact that he put well-toned body. Now, that was a really good reference to the ship as you can see my model right here it really explains really well with the ship but one of the things I really did not like was the fact like I said 
the use of really fancy words. And I know a lot of fancy words, and I know a lot of the shipyard lingo and jargon that goes with explaining about ships and ocean liners in general. But I just did not like having to look up the word every time I did not know what the hell it fucking meant. I just wanted to read the book and understand what it is. I mean, I, there's nothing wrong with John Maxton Graham. I'm a big fan of his, and I love his books. I've read The Only Way to Cross almost 300 times. It is, as has been said, the Bible of the ship buffs. But, you know, when it came to his W.W. W. Norton books, I mean, the pictures are beautiful. He's telling the story as true as he can. But the problem is the, the use of fancy words that most people don't use in normal everyday speech. And so, but the one thing I really did like about the book was that it included a complete set of deck plans for each level of the ship, as well as a giant cutaway of the United States. And the weird thing is, and I want to show you, let me go find it here on my shelf. Uh, that deck plan, or I should say the cutaway of the ship, was reproduced from this brochure right here. And this brochure that I am holding up right here, it says, Let's look inside the world's fastest luxury liner, SS United States American Registry, uh, New York. And you unfold this brochure, and uh, as you can see, this is the exact same uh, cutaway as is found in John Max Tone Graham's book. And that's not without any coincidence because it is the same cutaway. Now most of the uh, stuff you see in the book, like all the memorabilia, like all the memorabilia and artifacts from the ship, came from the Michael G. Jed collection, which if you know Michael Jed, and I'm pretty decent friends with him, he is actually a well-known collector, and he's also a model builder of ocean liners, and he's also a member of the SS United States Fan Club on Yahoo. And, uh, I mean, like I said before, this is a very beautiful book. I mean, it's beautifully written, beautifully illustrated, and, uh, and the other thing I really did not like, if it's a history of the SS United States, then why did there have to be a chapter on the Leviathan and a chapter on the America? I can kind of see about the America because she was a predecessor, but the Leviathan. I mean, I can kind of understand with the Leviathan too a little bit because that was the precursor because that was the first big ship Gibbs actually had to undertake when he became a naval architect, a restoration of Leviathan from troop ship form to um, ocean liner form, which originally was the German-built uh, uh, Habpeg's um, SS Vaterland. But, I mean, if you want to learn about the Vaterland, or, I mean, the Leviathan, read Frank Bernard's six-volume set, Leviathan, the World's Greatest Ship. It explains everything, Okay. Now, if you want to learn a book about the SS United States, it needs to be a book about the SS United States, and that's another problem. And this is about another book. It's the uh, Picture History of the SS United States, written by Bill Miller. And it's a beautiful book, too, but there's several chapters not talking about the United States. They're talking about other ocean liners that were under the U.S. flag, the cargo ships of the United States lines, and frankly, the SS America. Instead of being called the Picture History of the SS United States, it should have been called Picture History of the SS United States and other American passenger ships. And it's what really gets me kind of aggravated, you know, because when I got that book as a graduation gift, I thought it was going to be just a picture history of the SS United States. But no, it wasn't. And like when Frank Bernard wrote the picture history of the Normandy, it was just a picture history of the Normandy. Not every other fucking ship under the French flag, but just the Normandy. And but like I said before, uh... John Max Tones Graham's book, SS United States, Red, White, and Blue Reband Forever. It's a good book, besides the few follies it has. I mean, it's a great book, and you can find it online pretty cheap. Um, the cheapest I've seen it so far is like $40, $45, and the retail price on the book is $75. And I've seen it for on sale between $40, $45, up to 
eighty, eighty five dollars. The most expensive copy I've seen was about 125, but I think that's pretty fucking ridiculous. If you want to pay that much for the book, you might as well just buy it for 40, 45 bucks. And if you, it's easier for that. But anyway, that is my critique on the on the SS United States book, and this is uh, Cars Dude um, signing out and have a uh, safe voyage home. <laughs>